Now we're going to work on factoring simple trinomials. So remember a trinomial was three terms, and here we have a trinomial ax squared plus bx plus c, which you should know is second degree. But we're going to have all of these questions, the a value, or the number in front here is going to be a 1. So that makes them simple. These are the easiest trinomials to factor. You might remember that when you did factoring in grade 10, it gave you the roots of the equation or the x-intercepts. So that's what we're going to do. It's very important that you can do these simple ones. And then the next lesson, I'll do the complex trinomials where the a isn't 1. So the process you want to use when you're doing this, it's very simple. And if you've learned something called decomposition before, that will be when the complex trinomials, you just want to listen to me because I have the quickest and easiest way to factor more complex trinomials. So stick with me. So we look at this and what we're looking for is the product, the product. Okay, what does product mean? It means things that multiply together, right? So I want the product of the first and the last. First and last. Okay, so this is going to become part of a little poem that you're going to learn that will really help you never forget how to factor. So the first here is an A. So we'll call this the first term. This is going to be the middle term. And this is going to be my last term. So I want the product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle. I'm going to have to write it over here. Sum of Now on my website um, that I'll give you the link to, there will be a handout for factoring polynomials, a review. Very, very handy little document for you to look at. Sum of the one in the middle. Okay, so what's in the middle? So for this one, I'm looking for a product of the first and the last. So right now it's nice because there's a one here. So it's really just this one here for now. But you need to remember that because we're going to use it for the next kind. Product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle. Find two numbers that match the above. Take your time. Continue to fiddle. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to four and the same two numbers have to add to five. So you need to know your times tables, right? If you don't know your times tables by grade 11, it's just going to take so much of your time. So practice them. So multiplies to four adds to five. Well, that's pretty easy. I'm going to use pencil here now. So I have 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So now that I know these two special numbers, all I have to do is make an equal sign and put an x and put in the numbers that I have here. Now they're not always going to be positive, but in this case they are. Positive 4 times positive 1 gave me 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So I have x plus 4, x plus 1. So these numbers become inconsequential once you've found these two magical numbers, right? So product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle. And I can double check it. x squared plus 1x plus 4x is 5x and 4 times 1 is 4. Okay, so let's go to the second one here. Product of the first and the last. So it's 1 times 10. So I'm looking for a product of 10 and a sum of minus 7. So here we go, we have a negative number. So I want two numbers that multiply together to give me 10 and the same two numbers have to add up to negative 7. So if they have to multiply and be positive, they would either have to both be positive or both be negative, right? You can't get a positive number by multiplying opposite signs. So that means that they both have to be in this case, they both have to be negative because when I add them together, they have to give me a negative number. So that's your little clue before you start. I'm looking for two negative numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 7. So maybe you figured this out already. Minus 5 and minus 2. So minus 5 times minus 2 is 10 and minus 5 plus minus 2 is minus 7. And all I do is slap them in brackets here with an x in front. Done. Very easy. 
Okay, let's go to this one. I'm looking for a product of 1 times 21. So I want a product. I want two numbers. I'm not going to write PS all the time now. I'm just going to write it up like this. Two numbers that multiply together to give me 21. And the very same two numbers have to add up to minus 10. So just like the one we did previously, if I have a positive sum, a positive product, and a negative sum, they have to both be negative. So you go through the factors of 21. So it multiplies to 21. 1 and 21, 2 doesn't go in, 3 and 7. 3 and 7, I can make a 10 out of 3 and 7. So it's going to be minus 3 and minus 7. Minus 3 plus minus 7 is minus 10. And there we go. Plug that in. x minus 3 times x minus 7. And you're done. The next one, I have a product of minus 30. 1 times minus 30. And the reason I'm doing that, again, is because you're going to remember to do that when you do the uh, complex trinomials. And I want them to add together to give me minus 1. Okay, now this time, look, the product is negative. So that means one number has to be positive and one has to be negative. And they have to add to be negative. So that means the larger of the two numbers must be negative. So probably right away you can think that, oh yeah, 5 and 6 make 30. And I can make a 1 out of a 5 and a 6. But I want it to be a negative 1. So that means I need a negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Okay, there we go. X minus 6, X plus 5. Done. Done. Okay, number five. You're probably looking at that one and saying, oh, she said A was going to be one. Yes, I did say that. And that means that you should be thinking of something we did in the last lesson, and that is any time, any, any, any time that you're going to be factoring, you must always first look for a common factor. Common factor first. So we should write that here. Common common factor first. So what is the common factor for these this trinomial? Well, you should probably see it has 3, 12, and 9. That means a 3 can be taken out before I begin. So I divide everything by 3. 3x three squared, 12, 9. And now I do the product sum rule. Product sum rule, product of the first and the last. Two numbers that multiply to give me a 3. And the same two numbers add to give me 4. Product of the first and the last is sum of the 1 in the middle. So multiplies to 3 and adds to 4. Well, that's pretty easy, right? 3 times 1 and 3 plus 1. So don't forget this 3 has to stay here. Must stay there. Because if you don't, then that would mean this would not be equal to this one. If you just worked with the trinomial. Okay, so don't... don't don't leave out that common factor. You need to be able to expand this and get back to the question that you started with. Okay, so this one, x cubed, oh no, we're supposed to be doing second degree x squared questions, right? But look, common factor first. Get that in your head because it's very important. If you miss the common factor, you're going to say, I don't know what to do with this question. They all have an x, right? We pull an x out first. x squared, 18x plus 72. And now you do product sum. The product of, so you, you forget about this, but you leave it there, right? It's important to expand back to the, um, the original form uh, format. So I need to pull out an x. Now I'm looking for a product. Two numbers that multiply to give me 72. And I want two numbers that add to give me 18. Okay, so this might be a little tricky. Multiplies 72 adds to 18. So if you're stuck and you don't know what it could be, I suggest that you take 72 and you start dividing it by lowest common factors. So 2 goes in 36. If I divided by 2 again, I would have 18. If I divided by 2 again, I would have 9. So this would be 6 times 
uh, sorry, 2, 4, 8 times 9 is 72, right? 2 times 2 times 2. 8 times 9 is 72, but 8 and 9 can't give me 18. So let's divide by 3. 3. So now you have to look for different combinations. So 3, 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. And these two together, these, this is going to work now, watch, because I have 2, 4, 12 times 6. 12 times 6 is 72, and 12 plus 6 gives me the magic 18. So I just plug those in here. 12, x plus 12, and an x plus 6. And finally, you sometimes see questions like this, um, where you have an x squared and a y squared in your polynomial and you're asked to factor. So um, what you want to do is you want to use product sum again. So I'm looking for a product of 1 times minus 36. So two numbers that multiply to give me negative 36 and the same two numbers have to add to 5. So in other words what I'm saying is you're just going to ignore this y squared for now. Let's say it wasn't there. It makes it easier multiplies to minus 36 and adds to 5. So if the product is negative and the sum is positive, I need two numbers. One's going to be positive, one will be negative, and the larger number this time has to be positive. So I end up with a positive 5 when I add them together. So you should know 36 is 9 times 4. So if I put 9 and 4 here, and then I figure out which one is negative. Remember I said the the sum has to be positive, so that means that this number needs to be the negative number. Okay, so you're saying, well, now what are we going to do with this? So if I put in x plus 9, and I put in x minus 4, if I expanded this, I would have everything but the y's. So all I need to do is add in a y here at the end, and watch x squared minus 4. 4xy plus 9xy is 5xy, and 9y times minus 4y is minus 36y squared. Okay, so that's simple trinomials. The next lesson will be on factoring uh, more complex trinomials where the value of a is not equal to 1. Give me a thumbs up if you're following along. Um, let me know in the comment section below if you have something specific you would like me to answer for you.